and welcome to another edition of the Nightly News. I'm Chris Lee here with LPNN bringing you all the news that is news and none of the news that isn't most of the time. Tonight's episode is brought to you in part by our amazing sponsors. We have H&R Block right here in Page, Arizona and Big John's Texas Barbecue. A big shout out to them for helping us get you guys the news in real time. And a bit of big shout out to all of you guys out there for being a part of the network. Thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these videos. It really does help. All right, we've got a few things here for you tonight. <clears throat> so this is from the Coconino County Sheriff's Office from Williams, Arizona on November 3rd at 11.19 a.m. Coconino County Sheriff's deputies responded to a report of a single vehicle accident involving a two-year-old boy. Coconino County Sheriff's deputies responded to a residence in the Vale area, which is approximately 25 miles north of Williams, Arizona, for a report of a child who had been hit by a pickup truck. The father reported that the child had been struck by a neighbor's vehicle. In seeking emergency help, the father of the boy brought the injured child to the house of a Department of Public Safety trooper who lived nearby. Sheriff's deputies responded to the residence and transported the child to the Vale Airport where they met guardian medics and guardian air. The child was pronounced dead at the airport by medics on scene. Initial information indicates that a neighbor had been helping the family haul water. The child appeared to have been hit when the pickup truck was being backed up to connect the water to the trailer. The child was transported to the Coconino County Medical Examiner's Office and the incident is still under investigation. Other agencies that assisted in response to this incident include Guardian Medical Transport and Guardian Air, Lifeline Air, 2CN Fire Department, and High Country Fire Department. In other news, from Coconino County Public Health Services District. Last week, Coconino County Public Health Services District released their findings of an in-depth analysis of substance abuse trends and related deaths among Coconino County residents between 2012 and 2016. The study found a disturbing trend over the five-year time frame. Injuries and deaths primarily caused by alcohol and or drugs is on the rise. Some of the key findings show that drug-related deaths have increased 1.6 times faster than alcohol deaths. Alcohol was the primary cause of 5.7% of deaths and 5.3% of all hospital visits <coughs> throughout the county. And alcohol is the leading cause of death in the county for those aged between 35 and 54 years old. And the second leading cause of death among American Indian Alaskan Native Americans. The district is going to continue monitoring substance abuse trends and use the findings to collaborate with public health partners to enhance and expand services. We do have a much more in-depth report on the district's goals in an article on our website at lakepalnews.com. All right, let's see what else we have here. The mayor of North Ogden, Utah was killed in Kabul, Afghanistan. We do have something for that. I do apologize. It appears our internet is uh, doing its thing tonight. Let's see if we can't get this up here. There we are. But once again, the mayor of North Ogden, Utah, was killed in Kabul, Afghanistan. On Saturday, Major Brent Taylor, mayor of North Ogden, was killed and another service member was wounded during an attack in Kabul, Afghanistan, in what is being termed an insider attack. According to the Utah National Guard, Taylor was killed when an attacker suspected to be a member of Afghan National Defense and Security Forces opened fire on foreign servicemen. This is the second insider attack against U.S. forces in Afghanistan in the same number of weeks. And according to Time, Taylor is the fifth U.S. service member to be killed in an insider attack over the last four months. Taylor was 39 and leaves behind a wife and seven children. He was on his fourth tour of duty with the U.S. Army National Guard helping train members of the Afghan security forces. The attacker was shot by other Afghan forces after he opened fire. There has been an outpouring of support and condolences to Taylor's family throughout the weekend. Utah Governor Gary Herbert posted a statement on Twitter expressing his emotions about Taylor's death. I am heartbroken at the news that we lost one of our own today in Afghanistan and feel completely humbled by the service and the ultimate sacrifice offered by this brave 
and selfless soldier. <coughs> Excuse me. A GoFundMe to support Taylor's family had received over $300,000 in donations by the time this article was written. Uh, thank you for your service, and our, our thoughts go out to their family. All right, moving on to uh, other news here. Remember, tomorrow is election day. Get out and vote. Remember, your vote does count, and it does make a difference. There are many important items on this midterm ballot and several propositions that are amendments to our state constitution, so check them all out. For those of you voting in Page, remember that tomorrow's election will determine who our mayor will be and who our justice of the peace will be. The polling places for Page are, we will put those up in the comments later. There's obviously quite a few of those. Lois has posted the entire list of polling places from the Coconino County up on our website in an article with the location for voting centers within the county, which are not precinct assigned polling places. Currently, there are only three voting centers within Coconino County. Two are located in Flagstaff and one is located in Tuba City. You can check out that list at lakepalnews.com, guys. <clears throat> All right, moving on to some other news from this morning. <coughs> there were some schools on lockdown and uh, a minor evacuation. This morning, LPNN received several notifications from you. Our viewers out there, we do appreciate that. Thank you for being a part of the network and reaching out to us about police activity in the area of Cypress and Juniper. We were able to speak briefly with Lieutenant Jones regarding the, regarding the incident, and he informed us that Lakeview Elementary and Page Middle Schools were placed on soft lockdown after police arrived at a home on Cypress to investigate a reported aggravated assault, only to discover that a suspect had barricaded himself inside the home. The suspect was apprehended and placed into custody at around 10 a.m. this morning. The lockdown was lifted and residents were able to return to their homes. Lieutenant Jones informed us that the Page Police Department will be issuing a press release tomorrow with more details. All right, we do have some other stuff for you. Let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. There we are. Give me just a moment. Sorry, our internet is uh, giving us some problems tonight, guys. It is Page, Arizona, though. These things happen. All right, so the high flow event that is going on starting this morning and continuing through November 10th, an experimental release of 38,100 cubic feet per second of water from Glen Canyon Dam will be taking place. The flows are short term, yet significant enough to preclude any fishing from occurring during the peak high releases. The fishing is usually excellent the week following these high flows. Because these flows make aquatic invertebrates fish food available to trout, normal flows before and after the high flows should offer great wading and fishing this fall. The Department of the Interior will begin the release from the, uh, actually they began this morning, they, re, they will reach full capacity, or they did reach full capacity, at about 2 p.m. this afternoon. Releases will be maintained at peak levels for about two and a half days or 60 hours before ramping down. Normal operations of 6,500 and 9,000 uh, cubic feet per second will return on November 8th. The goal for the Department of the Interior is to move sand stored in the river channel and redeposit it to rebuild eroded sandbars and beaches downstream of the Perea River in Grand Canyon National Park. We have shared some viewer submitted photos of the event and will be out there tonight for their red, white, and blue display. So come on down and join us. We actually have some pictures. Um, <clears throat> one of our viewers, Mike Farrow, actually uh, sent us these moments ago, right before the news. Let me see if I can't get these pulled up real quick for you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me just a second. There we go. Let's see if I can't get this over here for you. He also sent us some actual video of this going down, uh, going down at the dam. So this is the high flow release and the colors that they have down there. Thanks, Mike Farrow, for sending us these pictures. We really do appreciate it. If you guys have any pictures that you'd like to submit, just send them on our Facebook Messenger, or you can email us at lakepalnews at gmail.com. Let's see if I can't pull up this video that he sent. I don't know if our internet will allow it to happen, but you never know. <laughs> oh, maybe. Nope. 
Let's see. There we go. Let's see if this will work. Possibly. Maybe. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll close step the video a little bit later, guys. All right. Let's see what else we have for you tonight. <clears throat> Moving on to some local events. The 2018 Shop with a Cop Fireman donations are still needed. The Page Police Department is looking for the community's support in donating to the Shop with a Cop program. This year, the department will be taking the kids in patrol vehicles and fire trucks to go shopping at Walmart on December 15th, beginning at 7 a.m. After the shopping spree, the group will have an early lunch or late breakfast at Jack in the Box, who has again graciously donated meals for each child. Then it's back to the police station to either wrap gifts or play with them until the kids are picked up by their guardians. Funds are needed to make this a great experience for these children who are less fortunate. The department's goal is to give them an experience they will cherish for years to come. Your donation would be very much appreciated, and if you are able to donate, please send your donation to the Page Police Department at P.O. Box 3005, Page, Arizona, 86040. Make sure you put on there, Attention Sandy Claim, and checks can be made payable to Shop with a Cop. Along those same lines, we just got notification from one of our other viewers that we do have, let's see here, oh, i got to find it, oh no, <laughs> well, we lost that one, let me see if I can't pull that up for you guys, possibly, hmm, let's see, Lois, if you can hear me, send me the link to, oh, wait, maybe this is it, possibly, possibly, oh, hold on, I'm waiting for it, our internet is having all kinds of problems, we do apologize for that. It's one of those days. Well, Lois, if you can send me the link to uh, Kathy's post, I will get that in here as well. All right, so <clears throat> let's see. We'll go ahead and move on with some other stuff while we are waiting for that link. The Community Center Advisory Board Meeting is happening on Wednesday, November 7th. The City of Page Community Center Advisory Board will be having a meeting at the Page Community Center located at 699 South Navajo Drive beginning at 5.30 p.m. Topics on the agenda include a status report on the parking lot repairs, new equipment, hours of operation, and information on double doors for the center. Also coming up on Wednesday, November 7th at the Community Center, starting at 5 p.m., there will be a cooking demonstration on how to make pumpkin pie. Head on down for a very tasty and mouth-watering event. You may even be able to taste the results. Also coming up, the City Council is holding a hearing on the recommended draft zoning ordinance. We realize this is not a major event for this week, but it is a major event next week for the entire city. The Page City Council is holding a hearing next Wednesday, November 14th at 5.30 regarding the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended draft zoning ordinance. The hearing will be held in City Hall and <clears throat> excuse me, public testimony will be taken, and all are welcome to attend. Let's see if we got uh, got that message through here. Having all kinds of fun stuff. Woo! This internet is behaving so well tonight, guys. We do apologize for that. All right, let's see what we have here. Ah, yes, thank you very much, Lois. She sent me the link for this. We're going to go ahead and bring this up. Elks Thanksgiving boxes. This is from the Elks Lodge. If you, uh, if you need one of these boxes, they are for the holidays. There is only a short time to sign up if you need a box for your holiday meal. You can sign up at the Elks Lodge from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on November 5th and 6th and the 8th at 806 Aqua Avenue. Distribution of boxes will be Saturday, November 17th at the Elks Lodge. She wants everyone to spread the word. There's only two days left to sign up, so if you do need one of those, make sure you head on over there and sign up for one of those. <clears throat> Pardon me. And let's see, we also have some other news that just came in. Uh, let's see, Lois sent it to me. There was a 3.1 magnitude earthquake that hit near Flagstaff on Sunday afternoon. The Arizona Geological Survey confirmed. The earthquake occurred at 2.31 p.m. southeast of Flagstaff. According to the Arizona Geological Survey, mild ground shakes, shaking was reported in Flagstaff, Kachina Village, Sedona, and Cottonwood. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to the weather. Oh, looks like we've got some things coming in. <clears throat> Ann is saying hi. Hi, Ann. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. 
And Kathy is posting in here what we just were talking about at the Elks Lodge. Thank you very much, Kathy, for putting that there in the comments for everyone. Mario says hello. Hello, Mario. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And Claudia says, good evening. That's always pretty spectacular when they release that much water. It is very spectacular. That's a lot of water. And Kathy says, thank you. Of course, Kathy. Thanks for letting us know. <clears throat> All of you guys, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos as well. It really does help us out. Now, let's see if we can't get uh, we can't get our weather to work real quick here, guys. Whew, man, that internet is having all kinds of fun with us tonight. I love it when that happens. Not really. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can't pop that out here. Possibly. Possibly. There we go. All right. So our weather uh, is looking at 44 for the low tonight. The wind's just above 5 miles an hour. Tomorrow, a high of 64 with a low of 40 in sunny skies with that wind just below 5 miles an hour. Wednesday, a high of 62 with a low of 38. Sunny skies and winds below 5 miles an hour. And it looks like the wind will be picking up on Thursday as the temperature drops. It looks like a front is moving through with a high of only 53 and a low of 32. Might actually get down to freezing if it drops that low. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see what happens. All right, let's go ahead and jump on to the events that are going on. I do know that, uh, let's see, where are we at here? Tonight at 6.15, which is two minutes ago, over at the community center, they are holding Zumba, which is free for everyone and, from what I hear, a really good time. All right, coming up tomorrow, we have at 10.30 a.m., we have yoga over at the community center. At 1 p.m. is the pool club over at the community center. At 1 p.m. is also bingo at the community center. And at 5 p.m. is Pilates over at the community center. There are some other things going on with the library, but we're working on getting that schedule put into this thing so we can let you guys know all that is going on. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight, and a huge shout out to our sponsors. Don't forget to thank them for helping us get you guys the news in real time. Thank you so much for joining us, and be safe out there tonight. And if you get a chance, head on down to the dam and check out uh, that, that spectacle they have going on out there right now with the lighting. We'll see you guys on the next one, hopefully on the Morning Cup tomorrow morning. You guys have a good one.